So we've recently started doing some tech tip videos, stoves. Uh, we did yesterday one on an elk arrow setup and we want to kind of continue that and really we've got a ton of different videos up already but I really wanted to dive down into some of the more important things and the questions that I get and kind of answering those maybe a little bit better. And so with what I want to talk about today with sites is not just the site or if you should use a rover or a mover, a three pin or a five pin, but all of that, but also how to use those pins when you're confronted with a situation with an animal coming in. So <clears throat> right now, this is the Alpha X33 and the HHA Tetra Rise three pin. Over here, this is the RX8 Ultra. Um, and then I have the t t HHA Tetra Tournament four pin max, I think. Um, with the, I like these sites, so this really, really isn't about the site as much as the mover and the pin portion of this. So for both of these bows, I'm shooting about a 478 or 485, I can't remember, arrow. I'm shooting about 80 pounds out of both of them, and I'm at 280-ish feet per second. So with that, when I'm going to help someone choose what site and how many pins to use, I'm gonna ask them a few different questions. I really don't ever suggest for anybody to hunt with a one pin site. There are people that are very um, accustomed and good uh, at hunting out west with a one pin site. And when I say that again, I'm talking about out west. Henry Ferguson has done it for years. He's very successful with it. But I really would not suggest coming out west hunting with a one pin mover type of a site. I would either have a fixed five pin, a fixed seven pin, or a five pin with a rover. So let's talk about that a little bit. Now with this site or this site, either one, I have my bottom pin. So uh, when I say bottom pin, either my 40 or my 50, or if you had seven pins, your 80 as my rover or my trick pin. So 20, 30, 40, 50, those are my pins. And then this pinky finger here, my 50 becomes my rover, meaning that's now my 60, 70, 80, and 90 as I'm dialing. Now, what people get can confused with, or maybe not confused, but get nervous about in a hunting situation is how many pins to use because something could run out and it was at 25 and then you wanna use you know, a farther pin and you may not have time to dial or whatever. So my views on this have changed a little bit. Back in the day, I shot a seven pin sight for many years. Great success with it, but I shot a seven pin with a rover. And the reason why I did that is if I need to reach out and touch something, um, I had those pins to do it and didn't need to move the dial. The farther out the animal is, generally the more chance you have being able to move the dial, um, you know, without the animal running off. Like you walk up, you range something, you're able to dial it. So with the, the pins gapped, the slower you shoot, the bigger the gap, the farther out, the bigger the cap, gap between the pins. That's where having a little bit less pins, if you can deal with that, not as cluttered, um, and your pin gap is tighter. So if you had a three pin, your pin gap from 20 to 30 and 30, 40 is a little bit tighter because you're not really stretching it out. You can be a little bit more accurate with that. And then your 40 yard pin is going to be your rover. So I've went down to less pins, a three and a four. Now, the one thing that people really need to think about that get confused or get, again, get nervous when animals come in as far as using that pin selection to your advantage without getting super confused on what to shoot it for. Meaning if an elk comes in and that elk is at 28 to 35 yards, 20 to 35, you just don't know. There are systems that you can put in place that you prep for ahead of time to really increase your chance of success with using a you know three to four to five pin side and a rover. I'm gonna go over that first and I'm gonna go back into the rover a little bit. So I'm gonna write this down here so our upper camera uh, takes it or can catch it and then I'll flip this over in a minute. I'm not a great artist So this is not really look like an elk But you'll get the idea. So that actually looks like a dinosaur, but no problem. So So far we have an elk and this center line here Center of lungs roughly heart and then bottom of spine spine you get the idea, I'm not an artist. So when an animal comes in at 20 to 40 yards and you don't know what it is, the easy, easiest way for you to get comfortable 
to just release that arrow and kill that animal is ahead of time go out and do what I basically did with like my stick bow when I'm using my point on is figure out my drops. So uh, Dan who's running the cameras they do this when he shoots in the bear bow world championships and stuff they get a speed where they can literally aim dead center in that target using their point and really not come out of it within certain ranges. So if the elk was at 26 yards and you put your 40 yard pin on its heart, you should still be able to kill it. So you go out to your um, block target matrix, whatever, and then, you know, make sure you have a good backstop. It's pretty simple, horizontal line. Aim at this line with your 40 yard pin when it's at 20. Aim it with your 20 yard pin when it's at 40. Figure out how much play you have in there. Did you have a minus 14 inch drop, a minus eight inch drop, whatever that is, then you can figure out your distance from 20 to 40 yards, what pin you would need to put on an elk to kill it no matter what. So once you figure, I raced my dinosaur elk, but once you figure what that size is, so let's say an elk's you know, kill height is 18 inches, right? So if it's at 18 inches, and I'm gonna flip this down. So we've got 18 inches of a kill height and I'm just gonna put KH. So let's say that means I can drop nine and raise nine. That might be 29 or 30 yards where you could aim in the middle of the target or that might be your 40 yard pins goes at the bottom of the body line, meaning you're only gonna shoot 18 inches high and catch the top of the lungs. There's a little variance in there. Me personally, I always use my bottom pin or, or my 40 inside of 40 to aim at anything for the most part, unless it's just dead in my face. And when I say that, that is when I un do not know the distance for sure. When I know the distance, I use that. But when the animal comes in and I'm like, is it 25, is it 35? Man, it could be 40. I always just put my 40 yard pin on its heart. So that has led me to use a three pin a little bit more or a four pin and anything out farther, I've got less pin clutter. My pins are more centered in the housing, um, you know, for longer distance shot and then I can dial. So if you're gonna, you know, be elk hunting quite a bit, white tail hunting, things like that, a three pin sight might be a better option for those reasons, um, just for, for accuracy purposes, especially if you can't judge yardage worth a shit. Because if you can't judge yardage, this is a fail safe from really 40 and in if you're shooting somewhere around 265 to 285 or faster feet per second. Now, the next thing to think about is the, you know, again, three pin, four pin, five pin mover, whatever, the Canyon Pounder. The Canyon Pounder is a sight from Dan Evans. And he had uh, the option sight first, which was one pin moving up and down inside the housing. Very effective. You could fold the sight housing open and then uh, you know have a single pin option and then close the sight housing and then you would have 20 through whatever you had, 60, 78, whatever you ordered. With the Canyon Pounder, you have however many uh, pins, and I'm just gonna do this, um, where we have five pins or 60 yards, your center pin or your 40 yard pin is your rover, but the whole housing moves up and down. People get really confused setting this side up because your bottom pin is not your rover anymore, your center pin is, and people are like, well, why, does it, why is it like that? Well, with that pin centered all the time in that housing and all the time in your peep sight, you're going to be more accurate rather than using a pin that is not perfectly centered. So that's another option and I can do a review and I think I already did one maybe on the Canyon Pounder. The negative size to that is if you're like me, you've been hunting for 20, 30, 40 years, you're used to using that bottom pin, it can be very confusing when you've got shit running down both legs. But that's another option uh, for you to, to be a little bit more accurate. You've got the four pins, five pins, six pins, whatever you get set up with option, but your center pin being the most accurate one. You could do the same thing on this Tetra three pin rise and set your center or your off colored pin. You could have green, yellow, green. That red pin could be your rover. And again, you could figure that out 
if you wanted that to be your your god pin or whatever um, for anything inside of 40 that you use that 30 yard pin to do that but you have to go out to the range start shooting figure out your drops and you will know exactly fairly quickly you'll know exactly what you need to aim at inside of 40 to hit it no matter what between 20 30 and 40 yards and again Bill Pellegrino is the one that showed me that a long time ago. It's very effective. So when in doubt, put your 40-yard pin on the heart if you think it's 40 or under and you should kill it. And then when you're going to set up you know, different sites, don't just throw a 7-pin mover on because um, you want more yardage. Sometimes, Again, you're going to be more accurate generally with less pins, but figure out what you're hunting, what you're most comfortable with, what your arrow speed is, and go from there. And again, I would not suggest using a 1-pin site if you come out west hunting. If you're already good with one, you don't need to message me and say I'm great with a one pin sight, I'm proud of you, that's really good and I'm glad you are. But as a rule of thumb, especially, and I think Dan would agree with this, as a guide, there's nothing worse than creeping up over the hill, ranging something at 24, it catching movement, running out to 52, the client letting down, dialing and, and shit going downhill, it's horrible, it's just throw the 50 pin high. So again, distance you're comfortable with, what you're shooting, speed, things like that. So if you have any questions, much like yesterday, or what you've become comfortable with, throw them down in the comments. It's been great conversation so far. If you have questions for me on what you're about to go hunt, definitely ask me as well.